what we do here is go back, back, back. Wow. Yeah. Yes. You got this working. Well, so nice to be here. So nice of you guys to join in and, and you know, be here. Um, always love coming up to Canada, I must say. I was, um, I was here last, uh, last, let's see, around this time, no, maybe about 10 months ago, I was shooting up in Vancouver um, a show called The Magicians, which is on the Sci-Fi Channel. And hopefully, you know, I'd love to do some more of that. Um, but I always, I always enjoy coming up here and um, hanging out with you guys. And depending how um, our election goes in November, I may be a permanent resident. So thank you, thank you. I think there's room for me up here, and um, you know, we'll be. You probably have quite a few American expats living in Canada. You know, be like Vietnam all over again. <laughs> Um, we do have a question from this side. Oh yes, of yes. course. Hi, honey. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Hi, Denise. Hi. So I really loved you in The Walking Dead. Thank you. you were great, Matt. Thank you. So, in understanding, <laughs> that was good timing. <laughs> Testing. Um, in understanding how Terminus got to be the way that they were, mm -hmm. the reasoning. Is that something that you as a character and you as an actress could relate to? Or did you just at one point say, I'm sorry, I just, I, I don't get the whole capitalism thing. Wow. Um, well, uh, for those of you, hopefully, you know, that haven't seen The Walking Dead, you can follow with this storyline. Um, so, uh, you know, the extraordinary thing about the, the, tale of The Walking Dead is, is really about, you know, the question continues to be asked, what would you do? What would you do? And, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those existential questions because you, you really don't know until you're faced with this, you know, horrific stuff and, you know, survival. How far will you go to survive? So, um, I am a mother. So I realize, you know, I, I, I mean, I can't imagine not doing whatever it took to, to keep my, my son alive. Um, so I think that that is, is really relatable to me in that particular storyline. Um, and that was what spoke to me the most, was, was being a mother. And the thing with The Walking Dead is, though, they do not give you any information. So you're really flying by the seat of your pants when you're working on that show. They, they keep everything very, very secret. Um, I was never shown a script. I, was, um, I wasn't told much. I had to sign a huge contract, non-disclosure contract, so I couldn't tell anybody I was doing The Walking Dead. Um, my son and my husband knew because I had to get on a plane and go to Atlanta and they kind of wondered where I was going, you know? So I had to tell them I'm shooting The Walking Dead. And, um, you know, my son, I had to like swear him not to tell any of his friends at school because like all of a sudden I was like the coolest mom that ever lived, you know? And um, they really only, once I got to the set, really could explain to me what this was about and and it was still pretty shrouded in, in you know mis mystery they said you know you're you're cooking food and it's meat but it might not be meat <laughs> and well if it's not meat what is it you know veggie burgers or something you know so it was it was all really cloaked in a lot of secrecy they have they have in, in Atlanta, when you're shooting The Walking Dead, they have tons of fans lining the streets. They get wind of, you know, who, where there's going to be shooting taking place. And then they, they see, if they see you coming to the set, they go, oh, let's see, um, 
Daryl is working today and, and, and so is Carol, that means Daryl and Carol are gonna do something together. So they, and they go on the internet and you know, they just are rampant spoilers. So they try to, when I was, when I was working with, um, with, with, with them, I had to literally throw a blanket over my head to be in the van from the hotel to the set so no one would see me. It's really crazy stuff like that. And I thought, what are you guys doing? Go duck, duck, don't let them see you. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you. All right. Does so, anybody else have any questions? I'm the other host over here. I was, yes. I was eating a Wonder Bar in the back because we were supposed to start at 155 and come down at 154. You guys are already rocking and rolling. Oh, uh, yeah. You Trekkies are crazy. So, yeah. Uh, we'll be taking questions. I mean, you guys don't have to come up. If you want to yell it, if you're shy, you got, you know, whatever's going on. Plenty of questions. Yeah. Favorite okay. episode from Star Trek? My favorite episode from Star Trek. Oh, well, I mean, I think the best written episode for me was yesterday's Enterprise. Um, that was just, thank you. That was just, um, you know, a, a, a great surprise. And, um, really exciting to come back to the show and, and in such a way I never saw that coming there was no anticipation of that and you know they just they just executed that storyline so well and of course then it opened the door for Sila to, to happen um, you know but the first season I must say had some wacky episodes I mean really crazy writing that you know took them a while to get up and running, but you know, it just sometimes boggled the mind what we were shooting. Like, is this really going to get on the air? And you know, stuff like that. But yesterday's Enterprise was a solid, solid show. Yes, darling. We do have a question from this side. Hi, Denise. It's really great to see you. Thank you, and you. Thank you. Um, I teach uh, at a university just a little north of here, and I teach religion and pop culture. Wow. And I always find a way to show Trekkies. Oh, always God, find a way. Oh. Always, always find a way to show Trekkies. Yeah. 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 The, and the, the halls of higher learning, yeah, my totally, documentary. Totally right. And I, but I also use an awful lot of uh, Star Trek. If you, as somebody who's a part of that, could say what this meant to you, uh, at, at, if you were talking to my students, my university students, what might you say that this experience meant to you in terms of passing something on to future generations, which is Gene Roddenberry's seems his whole idea. Right, well, um, you know, it's certainly been an extraordinary opportunity, and um, unlike any any other show I've been part of, and, you know, I've certainly been lucky enough to be in some really great um, shows and movies, but this, this, this sort of, um, the legacy of Star Trek is, is, you know, we're just so grateful to be part of this. Um, you know, it, it's tapped into such a um, a nerve, and we we we're, we always just marvel at at you know the strength of its storytelling and the you know the power that it has. Um, I. I really go back to thinking that that it has a way of um, a very positive um, utopian view of the future. That that you know, not only will we survive, you know, but we will be better in the future. And and that is not something that is often um, told. That tale. It's usually you know, sci-fi can be very dark and dystopian and you know we're gonna we're gonna destroy ourselves and you know sometimes it feels like that's you know where we're headed but we 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 take we take the right turn and we you know we get better for it you know it's really interesting I, I bring this up I don't know why that I just thought of it but you know, I, I'm, you obviously, you know, we're in the midst of this very strange political election in my country, the weirdest, certainly, that, you know, I and most people have ever witnessed. And it's, it's very serious. And so, um, Armin Shimmerman, you know, the great Armin Shimmerman, 
he um, has drafted a letter, an open letter. I hope you guys have a chance to read it. It's an open letter signed by 75 of us from Star Trek, pleading that we, as, as fellow Star Trek lovers, people who are involved, family, that we don't, um, we, we take notice and we, we stop this insanity and, and, and pledge our allegiance to the, the same candidate. And this is, I know this, we're in Canada, so I'm sort of, but New York is right over there, so there's a chance that some of you guys, you know, may have dual citizenship or whatever, but um, it's, 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 a very, it's a very powerful um, uh, voice of Star Trek, and it represents something that, you know, is really um, a defining culture. And, and I've met so many people who have watched Star Trek, who have gone on to really make a difference in the world. And that is the greatest compliment, you know, anybody can have as an actor. That, you're, that it's resonating on a deeper level, the work that you're part of is resonating, and that people can um, actually glean something from that and make a positive change. It's a long-winded answer, but... It's a good question that led to a yeah. very, very good answer, right guys? Uh, uh, anyone has anything? Uh, maybe you're, you're in Trekkie shock. Yeah, come on up. Many shows, when a character leaves the show, they're often forgotten and not mentioned again. It was very difficult with Tashiar. She was held in very high regard, mentioned many times, other appearances, through like pictures, and say to take a little portable hologram. How was your reaction with how your character was treated after you left the show? You know, what a, what a lovely thing to say, by the way. And, uh, you know, um, what a great uh, compliment to me, to, to this character. And I, I do think that, you know, I, when, you're, when you're in it at the moment, you don't really, really see sometimes. But this, this character of Tasha Yar really did hit, you know, a, a chord in people. And um, it was, and again, it was, it was a difficult decision to leave the show and, and no one really wanted me to. So the fact that, they they were able to you know embrace that allow for that and not turn against me you know and continue to you know invite me back in and and take part in this in the show was was extraordinary and it is extraordinary and here i am you know still very much part of you know this this um this this legacy so um, it was it's, it was it's a great compliment, believe me, and I don't I don't take it for granted. All right, we do have a question from this side. Yes. Hello again. How are you? Good. So we just met Brent Spiner for the first time a few weeks ago at Fan Expo, and he seems like he's just crazy, funny, goofy all the time. Yes. So I can only imagine what went on behind the scenes. Can you share a few things with us about ah, all the goofiness? Okay. So, yes, Brent is a wonderful clown and witty and smart, so he's got it all, you know, going on. Um, he also does one of the best impersonations of Bing Crosby I have ever seen, who is my grandfather. So, he would often sit on the bridge and look at me and just go, Come here, granddaughter. Come sit on Grandpa's lap. You know, I, I, and he was con. So we have a running thing where he, I call him Grandpa, and he calls me Granddaughter. So that's our name. Like if we text each other, you know, that's what it'll be. And you know, he'll always just say, you know, come. Fi I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix you a glass of Minute Maid. You know, and just <laughs> ridiculously stupid stuff. Um, so he was, uh, he was just always, always making us laugh, keeping us, you know, having fun on the set because it was such long, tedious days, you know. We, and we spent much more time with each other than we did our own families, 
you know, and um, we were there easily like 15 hour days each day. So it was important to keep the energy and the mood light, you know. So between he and Jonathan, it was ridiculous. It, it was, you know, chaos any, at any given moment. And they would break into, they're both amazing singers, and they would just break into song and dance, and you know, suddenly you were like on a Broadway musical on the in bridge, and you know, just silly, stupid stuff all the time. Wonderful. Got it. Right. We've got a question over here. She was nervous last time, but she looks a lot more confident this, Look this at panel. Look this cute outfit. Okay, here we go. So I was on the whole first season, and then I came back in the third season, and then I came back a bunch more times in the different seasons. So a couple of years. <laughs> a bunch. A bunch of years together. A bunch of years. You, she had a mathematical question last time too. I, she was I just know you like math. Throwing curveballs. You're like you're like going to ask me if Tasha Yar spent five hours in the in the ready room and then she went to the holodeck and spent another three how many hours totally would she be on level one <laughs> i don't know zero <laughs> okay. good one great great good question. one she's got a question us. coming from this side All now right. hello hi so um where i am right now in tng i just started watching it uh tasha just left uh, I was wondering why you decided to leave. Like, was there a problem with the cast or the writers or what sort of happened with that? Ah, okay. So, um, no, no problems like that. No, with the cast or anything like that. What was beginning to... The, the first season, um, they didn't quite know what they were going to do with all these characters. They sort of, like, threw a bunch of stuff up to see what would stick. And television at that point was beginning to shift and what was going on were big multiple um, casts with multiple storylines. And that's what I thought Star Trek was gonna look like. So there'd be, you know, two and three storylines going on per show. And, you know, we would all have a little bit of something going on. Well, a number of episodes were going by where I was just standing on the bridge going, aye, aye, Captain, and that's all I said the entire show. And I had to really make that decision, is that, was that going to be enough for me? And, you know, was that satisfying? And is that what I wanted to do for the next six years? And, you know, it, it took months of deliberations and talking to everybody and, so it was that sort of informed my decision to, to leave at the end of the first season. Oh, Thank you. Wonderful. We got a question right here. What did it feel like to be on the Enterprise? Did it feel like probably being on the set feel like you're actually in the ship? Um just in case they didn't hear it. What did it feel like to be on the Enterprise? Did you feel powerful? Did it feel like you were on a ship or something? Did you have, did you get the power? <laughs> I just, I just wanted to say you that. Want it. You want it. Right you know, now, you're on the Enterprise. I'm not trying to get a job or anything, but if there's know, another no. one coming, I'm uh, just trying to get out of Hamilton. Anyways. You know, um, it, you know, we had to, it was a very imaginative world that we created. And, um, you know, a lot of it was kind of awkward. Like, m one of my favorite things was when, um, we had to pretend that you know the ship was getting fired at or we were getting you know so we'd have to sort of do this wiggle and everybody would just go okay on my command like the director would say one two three so all of us would go <laughs> so I, I mean you had to really get over the silliness pretty quickly and you know the first year I remember I, when I first pulled out my phaser, I went like that, and they said, no, 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 you can't make that sound. It won't, we're gonna put in the sounds later. And I went, I didn't make a sound. No, you went, yeah. I said, I did? Because it felt like you're, 
you have it, you say something. That was when you're a kid, and you're like a bang bang. Or, so that's you were so silly all over the place. It felt a little a little kind of crazy or funny than powerful. If I can if I can say that, like the first time I saw a Ferengi, I said, You gotta be kidding me. This looks like a big butt. <laughs> and this is my enemy? This is like our greatest fear? Is this giant butt walking around? So, you know, we were just had to really make some <laughs> mental adjustments. All right, we got another question over here. Hi, cool oh, outfit. Oh, thank you. Uh, I just had a question. With, I asked this with uh, Captain Bach as well. Uh, if you have any projects that you wanted to dive and get, yeah, get your hands into. Actually, my thought was, uh, were you playing the thought of having you on Orange is the New Black at, with Kate Mulgrew? Wow. Right. Um, I like Orange is the New Black. That would be, you know, really fun to do. Um, you know, there's, I, I, I've loved recurring on this um, Showtime series, Ray Donovan, for the last four years. And, you know, we'll see, we'll see where that goes. Um, you know, I continue to do that. And, um, I've just been, you know, reading some other scripts re recently about some other some other projects right now. So, so like, TV is really kind of interesting and fun to be working on right now. So, you know, nothing. I hope to go back and do some more magicians. I really love doing that show as well. So, that's about that's about it. But Orange is the New Black, I love. I love that show. Yeah, I, I think I could give them a run for their money on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, thank you. Okay, we got time for maybe two or three more. So if you, you want to come, you want to yell it or? Maybe you should come come up uh, here. I, so I, I can, can say I can repeat oh, okay. it. Your last episode, Skins of Evil. Yeah, I think skin, of evil. skin of Evil. Skin of Evil. <laughs> well, for me, I'm trying to hear it second hand. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay. Uh, How did you input? Okay, yeah. she have any input in her final speech on her last episode of the show? <laughs> we had a good thing in the green room where we're salad, so we have a special we, we have relationship. We a special relationship. Um, no, you know that was written that ho that that hologram speech. No, it was so perfectly written. I was blown away. I when I read that. It was like perfect. It, it it sort of encapsulated all of my my actual feelings towards each one of those actors, and it was a very very difficult um, speech to shoot. Um, fortunately, uh, before the camera turned on me, I had I was able to do it a number of times to each of the actors. So it had, was their close ups first. It was, it was very hard for me. I knew I couldn't, I couldn't say it with tears in my eyes because Tasha had made that hologram just in case. So it wasn't like I had died yet, you know? So, but I was feeling so emotional when doing it and it was a very, very difficult day to shoot. But um, by the time the camera turned around on me, I did it in one take and that was it, you know? And, and we, we did it. And, it was like, oh my God, it was it was really well written. It's very powerful when you see it. I mean, when I watched it, even, it's so strange. I, I watched my own thing and I cried watching myself. It was like, what's wrong? This is weird. It's like, I did it and it's me, but I'm crying. I was moved watching it. So it was good. Was it, um, it was well, your idea to look at each of the cast members? I mean, it was written that way. You know, I was addressing each one individually. You know, I, I said something to each one individually. And so, you know, I had to look at them. And the director was, you know, there, obviously. Um, you know, it was like that beautiful little heavenly mound that I was on. It was really ethereal. And, you know, it was really kind of a trip to do. Okay. Our last right. question over here. Now, Skin of Evil was not your last episode. Right, yeah, yeah. So what possessed you in the last scene when they're exiting the uh, cargo bay to lead out your way? So that, I thought, would be my last episode. See, they flipped those uh, episodes. 
because the Skin of Evil script was ready before the, um, what was that called? Hmm. I forget the name of that episode. It's trivia. Someone's got it. Um, but anyway, that, so we had to shoot the Skin of Evil first. And when obviously they air, they reverse them. So when I was shooting that last episode, which, would, which I did believe would be my final shot in the, in the show, I thought I would just play this joke and, um, you know, wave goodbye to the fans as Picard and, and, and Crusher leave the, the bay. And all of a sudden they said, cut. And I thought they were gonna go, Denise, come on, like we gotta do it again. And nobody said anything. And they brought down a cake and the producers came and they said, congratulations, we love you, good luck, we're so happy you were here. And I thought, well, they've gotta redo that scene and nobody said anything. So they were forced to use that. So you look, um, you'll see me waving goodbye in the background, which is great. I love that they had to do that. Symbiosis. Symbiosis. Wow. I knew someone I knew, would get it. Of course they would. I looked at his beard and I said, he's got knowledge. Yeah. I know he's got knowledge. He does. He looks like it. <laughs> Guys, that is it. That's all the time we have for this panel. Round of applause.